it's summertime, and more people than ever are going to be touring the United States. Getting around by car in a strange city can be confusing and stressful, but there is an alternative that's good for your mental health and good for the environment, tour buses. While you're riding in comfort and enjoying the sights from a tour bus, you're helping to keep the skies clear of pollutants by not driving your car, especially here in LA. Each bus with tourists aboard removes approximately 25 cars from the road, cars that would add to congestion and pollution. 1993 promises to be a record year for tourism in America. You can take in the Big Apple by bus, and you can see all the sights in the nation's capital the same way. Ease into the Big Easy New Orleans by bus. In San Francisco, you can get across the Golden Gate and beyond on a bus tour. Thousands of people enjoy seeing natural wonders and special points of interest by bus. In Los Angeles, one of the main attractions is touring the stars. The stars' homes, to be exact. We're going to head towards uh, George Burns, one of my favorites. Fred Schwartz is the owner of Casablanca Tours. And we're going into George's driveway. Watch out, here comes George, he's running after us. <laughs> Georgie boy, me. I love this guy, he's nice. There's the gardener, there's George's gardener. Los Angeles is a major destination for tourists from around the world. In a typical year, over 30 million people visit the city. And there are more than 40 tour companies to choose from. One of the biggest companies in Los Angeles is Starline Tours, which carries around 2 million people a year. Starline runs 14 tours a day. The vice president of Starline Tours is Fred Sapir. People that they come from uh, Chicago, New York, Florida, those areas, all over the United States, and they come to see their friends in Los Angeles. Well, when they get to Los Angeles and they're with their friends and they're working, so friends, they bring them over here and we take them on the tours and they go to work and then at the end of the day, they come and pick them up. I'm taking the Starline City Tour. I have never taken one of these tours before. I'm amazed at how much I'm learning about the city I've lived in for three years. And I'm not in my car, getting stuck in traffic, adding to the smog and congestion. Now, a man named Sid Grauman started the Chinese theater. He went to China one time. He saw a palace he liked so much. When he came back to the United States, he built an exact replica of it. Now, parts of the Chinese theater were built in China and shipped over piece by piece. Taking a tour bus reduces traffic congestion and pollution, but for visiting tourists, it means even more. We're Liz and Hilda Boswell. We're from Hamilton, New Zealand. Great. And you're taking a tour bus today? We're taking a tour bus. Yes. And why did you decide to take a tour bus? You drive on the wrong side of the road, <laughs> and it's most convenient. It's most convenient. We're from the East Coast. This is the West Coast. If you don't know your way around, what to see, it can be a very unhappy trip by not seeing what you wanted to see because you don't know where it's at. I've looked at a few maps and I've yet to be able to figure my way around the streets. So if somebody can show me, it'll make it nicer. You might be thinking, okay, there are a lot of tours, but they all go to the same places. Think again. Hello, uh, Mr. Swanson. My name's Matthew. Uh, I'll take one of these, a copy of Marilyn Monroe's death certificate. And okay. Maps to two cemeteries, Hollywood and Westwood Cemetery. Walk to the east side of the Chinese theater and you'll find Graveline Tours, one of the most offbeat tours in Hollywood. A fleet of two customized hearses spirits tourists to sites where celebrities from John Belushi to Mae West met their demise. Graveline Tours owner and guide is Matthew Anderson. Now we don't even start with a movie star, we start with a rock singer, Janis Joplin. So it's coming up on the right. It used to be called the Landmark Hotel. Second room across, second room up. It's a lovely place to die. Believe me, you'll love this. If you're touring Hollywood history with a friend or vacationing with the kids, get out of the car and into a tour bus. Taking a tour bus or van isn't the only way that you can leave the car behind. Many cities have convenient public transportation, making it easy to get around and see the sights. In Los Angeles, the MTA has many buses that serve Hollywood, as well as many other major tourist destinations. And in the near future,
future, the new Red Line subway will extend from downtown to Hollywood. So the next time you're vacationing in a city, or you just simply want to find out more about your own backyard, consider the option of avoiding a car and easing traffic congestion and pollution, as well as your stress level. Welcome to the 21st century. It's a long way from the neighborhood gas pump to this, an electric vehicle charging station. It's the era of the electric car, or is it? There are some serious technological barriers to overcome before we enter the era of the electric car. Most batteries remain heavy, expensive, and offer limited travel range. Lastly, an adequate number of convenient recharging stations has yet to be built. And to top it off, despite some showy prototypes, the major automobile manufacturers seem to be taking a cautious wait-and-see attitude. So, is the era of the electric car, or EV, just a distant daydream? Not for a group of ambitious entrepreneurs, innovative government agencies, and far-sighted public utilities, like the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. The department's assistant general manager is Eldon Cotton. The Department of Water and Power's primary interest in electric vehicles came as a result of air quality concerns in that more than two-thirds of all the emissions come from transportation. And so as we began to look at how we could make a difference, we realized that electric transportation was the answer, not only with regard to the individual passenger vehicle, but there are many vans in fleets around the city today that are electrically powered, and that can be expanded in the future. There will be trolley buses, there will be buses at the airport, all electrically powered. Despite all this promise, the major auto manufacturers have produced prototypes but remain cautious. But you don't have to wait to go electric. You can convert your present car. If you've got ten dollars to $13,000 and can wait a few weeks, an innovative company called Electric Car Los Angeles can turn your gas-powered vehicle into a pollution-free EV. Electric Car's Jim Driver. Electric Car Los Angeles will have vehicles coming in one end of the of the plant where we decontent. We take from the exhaust pipe uh, to the transmission out. Uh, we discard that. We, we sell them as, as parts. Uh, then we put electric uh, motors in and the power packs. Uh, we can produce 10 vehicles a day. That's our planning potential. Many see the development of electric vehicles as a means to transfer the expertise of America's ailing defense companies into a new job-producing high-tech transportation industry especially in Southern California. Here, in a building once used by the Lockheed Corporation, an economic revolution just might be in the making. It's called CalStart. CalStart's president is Mike Gage. CalStart is a consortium of organizations, business, utilities, aerospace industry, and governments that have come together, over 60 different entities, that have come together to try to create an advanced transportation industry in California, looking at electric vehicles and other clean fuel vehicles. CalStart's prototype electric car took 18 months and $2 million to develop. From its battery power to its electronic navigation system, the CalStart car is seen by many as an image of America's transportation future. California, because of its air pollution problems, has set a standard that requires that 2% of all vehicles offered for sale in 1998 have to be zero emission vehicles or electric cars. That's 40,000 vehicles in 1998 in California. By the year 2003, that's 200,000 in California alone and looking at the 40% the of the rest of the nation's population that have also adopted this California standard, that's going to be more than 300,000 vehicles by the year 2003. Important technological hurdles remain, but at places like the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, preparations for the electric car and EV era are already underway. The creation of an infrastructure to support electric vehicles is a big job, and in fact that has been our primary focus. We are making sure that there are charging stations throughout the city, 60 by the end of this year, 140 across the entire state with the cooperation of other electric utilities. We're making sure that batteries can be exchanged and reprocessed in an environmentally safe fashion. We're making sure that there are training programs being put in place so that technicians will be well skilled at 
working on electric vehicles. Infrastructure is the key, but we have made a pledge that Los Angeles, Southern California, and the state will be EV ready. Electric cars like this are already here, and there will be a lot more of them as we move into the 21st century. With electric cars in our future, we can look forward to a clean air tomorrow.